Carlo Ancelotti is the only manager to have won a league title in all of Europe's top five leagues, as well as being the most decorated manager in Champions League history. So what if we restarted his career and put a 36-year-old Ancelotti back at his first club, Reggiana, in Serie C? Would he be able to go on and eclipse his real-life record? It might not be Serie A, but he does go on to win his first title in his first season, taking his hometown club to win Serie C. They also win the Serie C Super Cup. Basically, Serie C is Italy's third division and it's got three different leagues, basically the same as England's sixth division with the National League North and South. But at the end of the season, the three winners of the three leagues play in a mini tournament and Ancelotti won. You can see it's a really prestigious tournament. This clearly impressed a lot of people as, over summer, he was made the Udinese manager, taking them to a very respectable 10th place in the table, their highest finish since 2013. However, the team dropped to 12th the following season. Maybe Carlo isn't as good as Udinese thought he was, especially as he only takes them back to 10th place in his third season, where they had been as high as sixth mid-season. But the board seemed to have a lot of patience because next season, he only takes them to ninth place, but he still hasn't been sacked. I mean, if I was the chairman, he'd have been gone a long time ago. Perhaps they know more than I do because next season, he repays their faith by guiding them to seventh place in the table and qualifying for the Europa League. It's the club's first European campaign in 15 years. Udinese squeezed into the top eight of the league phase as they scored more goals than Atalanta did, meaning they go straight straight through into the round of 16, where they managed to actually beat Atalanta. The quarterfinals go very well as they managed to get past Villarreal, but sadly the run comes to an end in the semi-finals, losing to eventual winners Bournemouth. It really was a season of what ifs for Udinese because they also lost the Coppa Italia final and finished eighth in the league without any European football for next season. If Carlo could just have won a couple more games, he could have had two trophies and European football. He does win manager of the year though, if that's any consolation. With a taste for European football, you would have thought that Carlo would have left Udinese that summer to move to a bigger club, but no. He sticks it out with Udinese and finishes in sixth place the following season. And so heading into his eighth season in charge of Udinese, he's looking for a trophy, but he's not going to get it in Serie A, only finishing in seventh. In the Europa League, they finish in seventh place by virtue of goal difference. Once again, sending them to the round of 16 where they beat Genk 2-1 on aggregate. In the quarterfinals, Udinese come up clutch, relying on an 87th minute winner to qualify for the semi-finals where they then have to rely on penalties to get past Cologne to reach the final. So Carlo has a chance to get revenge on Bournemouth for beating them in the semi-final two years earlier. And given the way he's clutched himself to victory in every round so far, he may as well do it in the final as well, winning it on penalties. Finally, Carlo wins something with Udinese. And clearly that's what he was waiting for because towards the end of the next season, he joins Wolfsburg of the Bundesliga, inheriting a team that came eighth, qualifying for the Conference League. Udinese, by the way, came seventh place, also getting a Conference League spot. He's able to improve Wolfsburg up to seventh place in the table and finishes just ahead of Udinese in the Europa Conference League league phase. Slovenian side Copa stand no chance in the round of 16 and Ludogrets get battered in the quarterfinals. But Southampton get the better of him in the semi-finals, where his former club also get knocked out. I wish we could have seen a Wolfsburg versus Udinese final, that would have been perfect. So after a great first full season at the club, it all goes a little bit wrong, as Wolfsburg finish in ninth place and Carlo Ancelotti gets sacked. I feel like that was quite harsh, especially when he's shown that given all the time in the world at Udinese, he can win them the Europa League. I mean, he got Wolfsburg to the semi-finals of the Conference League. I feel like they've been a bit premature there. But considering he's won so many trophies in real life, the three trophies he's got so far, if we're generous and include that Serie C Super Cup trophy thing, then he has a lot of work to do to catch up to his real life self. So after taking a year out from management, he joins Real Sociedad of La Liga, guiding them to ninth place in the table, their lowest finish since 2025, 11 years ago. Mm, not really the, uh, the ideal start there. Even worse, they only managed one win in the Champions League league phase, finishing 34th. Perhaps Sociedad wasn't the best choice, so he leaves the club, 
because he somehow finesses the AC Milan job and wins them the title in his first season. I mean, talk about a major turnaround. That's absolutely insane. We just won't talk about the Champions League. Although they had won the Champions League a few years before, which meant they qualified for the Club World Cup, which takes place every four years at this stage. And they went on to win it, battering Arsenal 5-1 in the final. And so Carlo wins his second trophy in charge of AC Milan. His second season in charge isn't quite so good, but coming third in the league and losing the cup final isn't that bad. Oh, apparently it is because he was sacked at the end of the season. In my eyes, Carlo did nothing wrong at AC Milan or Wolfsburg, but he's been sacked. This is not fair. But Milan's loss was Chelsea's gain as they hire him for the 2039-40 season. He was way off the title fight, but third place is still pretty decent. The following season, he does fall behind Spurs, which isn't really a good look, but in 2042, he's a lot closer to that title fight. A thing's about to fall into place for Carlo Ancelotti. Well, he stays in third place, but is just two points off the title. Up until now, he's only taken Chelsea as far as the quarterfinals of the Champions League, but this season could be different. After finishing eighth in the league phase, they just about get past Barcelona in the round of 16. They then knock out Real Madrid in the quarterfinals before relying on an extra time winner in the semi-finals. All that stands between him and his first Champions League are Arsenal, who go on to defeat Carlo in the final. But Carlo isn't a quitter, and he uses that as motivation for next season, where he wins his first Premier League title two points ahead of Man City. And what does he do when he wins a trophy? He leaves the club this time joining Everton. Although in 2045, it turns out the Toffees are pretty good as he comes within a whisker of winning the title behind Tottenham. So in 2046, he tries again, and this time wins Everton their first title since 1987, a phenomenal achievement. And it could have been more as only Arsenal stopped them from reaching the Champions League final. He's won the most Champions Leagues in real life as a manager. Surely he's going to win one in game soon. Well, the following season, Everton come fifth in the league phase. They have just enough about them to get past Dortmund in the round of 16 before battering Chelsea in the quarterfinals. This time though, they get the better of Arsenal and has a chance to defeat Real Madrid in the final to win his first Champions League. But he has lost here before. Will he lose again? Not this time. Everton win 1-0 and Ancelotti has his first Champions League and his second Premier League as Everton do the double. Also notice Chelsea in sixth place. It turns out he moved to Everton at the exact right moment. The following season, he wins the UEFA Super Cup and his first domestic cup in England, but they drop to third in the Premier League lose the FA Cup final and get humbled by RB Leipzig in the Champions League quarterfinals. Perhaps the magic of this Everton side has gone. Or maybe he just needed a year to regroup as he wins his third Premier League title with Everton in 2049. And it could have been so much more as he also loses the League Cup final and the FA Cup final. He also loses to Bayern Munich in the Champions League quarterfinal. If you can't beat them, join them. Although I should clarify to Carlo, that's just a figure of speech, not actually what you should do, because that's what he did. He left Everton to join Bayern Munich and naturally won them the Bundesliga. They've won 20 titles in the last 28 seasons. So obviously he then wins it again in his second season, as well as the German Super Cup, but gets knocked out to the Champions League semi-finals by eventual winners Arsenal. He makes it a hat-trick of Bundesliga title wins in 2052. But in 2053, something incredible happens. He doesn't win the Bundesliga, dropping to third place. But that might have been because they were focusing their attention on the Champions League, where they actually reached the final, but lost to Tottenham. That genuinely might be the lowest point of his career, and he's been sacked a few times. So the following season, he gets his act together, winning the Bundesliga and the DFB Pokal. Can he win a Champions League to make it a treble? Well, after cruising through the league phase, he manages to beat German rivals Dortmund in the round of 16. Monaco were easy pickings in the quarterfinals, but once again, Arsenal beat him in the semis. But Carlo's now 67 and has got one year left on his contract, and so decides that he's gonna give it one final shot one final chance to win a Champions League 
and then he retires. Carlo manages to win his fifth Bundesliga, but gets knocked out of the DFB Pokal quarterfinal, so the treble is not on the cards this season. In the Champions League, the only team to do better than them in the league phase are Arsenal, the team that keep knocking them out. But in the round of 16, where Bayern Munich beat Bayer Leverkusen, Arsenal lose, which gives him finally a clear path to the final. Once again, he defeats Dortmund in the quarterfinals, and he gets past his former club Everton in the semis, setting up a Champions League final against Chelsea for his final game in management before he retires. Which ends in victory. He's finally won that Champions League with Bayern. Whilst he didn't reach the height of his real life career, he did end up with 23 trophies, including two Champions Leagues, but it could have been way more if it wasn't for his rivals, Arsenal. But Arsenal weren't his only rival. Remember when he got sacked by Wolfsburg? Well, they replaced him with Jose Mourinho, and if you want to see how his career panned out, that video is on screen for you to watch right now. 